Glasgow, it's a joy, always another joy to be by home in Glasgow and uh, to uh, lift up my voice uh, before you and make uh, my Saviour known. The hope, the only hope of the nations, the only hope for Scotland and the only hope of Perth for Glasgow. Let Glasgow flourish by the preaching of his word and the praising of his name. Let it be so even this very day. So we come to you, Glasgow, with joy. We love you. God loves you. And Christ is uh, dead for sinners and alive from the dead in order to clear them, justify them, make them right with God by faith that is in his name, believing, only believe, says Jesus, and you shall be saved right with God for time and for eternity. I have uh, Bibles here to give away freely. I've got New Testaments. i got this here, Gospel of John, which is an extract from the Bible and an excellent place, I tell you, uh, to begin if you've never read the Bible before. Here in God's written word, Bible, New Testament, Gospel of John, here you can read about my Savior. No, sir! You be quiet, sir. Hold your leash. Hold your leash, sir. Go and wash your knife out, sir. Get right with God. Your heart cleansed and your mouth cleansed as well. So Glasgow, hear me. Listen, please. The Savior, the only Savior, Jesus, He's a better than God's so what he do, sir. All right? Have a good day. Have a good day. Good, 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 good. Well, read it, sir. Read the Bible. Read the Bible, friends. Read God's word. In them, in the scriptures, says Jesus, they testify of me. That's the place to find eternal life in the name of the Savior, Jesus. Only Savior. What a bad language in Glasgow today. Hearts that need washing, mouths that need cleaning out. Glasgow, what's the matter with you? Get yourselves right with God today while you may. Time is short, the Bible says. Who knows what a day will bring forth. Maybe today the last. Eh? For somebody, under the sound of my voice here today, last opportunity the last call god calls you by his son christ jesus calls you glasgow calls you repent and believe the gospel he says for the kingdom of god is at hand you'd like to read about these things copy of god's word is freely offered to you no cost no obligation to you none whatsoever yours freely for the asking undertaking. Got a question? Well, feel free to ask it, as long as it's pertaining to these matters of which I speak of here to you today. And you like somebody to pray for you, then I would be more than happy. Glad to do that for you too, Glasgow. Just come and ask. Only here to help point you in the right direction and that's only one direction the Savior Christ Jesus who came into the world to save sinners as the last and greatest of the prophets says behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and will take away your sin today Glasgow should you believe on him, trust in him that's the only way forward that's the only right way I am the way, the truth and the life, says Jesus, no one comes to the Father, only, only, only through me, no other name, under heaven, by which you can be saved, only through Jesus Christ. God so loved the world, Glasgow, and you're part of it. God so loved the world, this bad, bad world, that he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, die in their sin, that is, 
Guru lost eternity, damned forever, no way back to God then. Only now as you're hearing the gospel, hearing the good news, hear the voice of the Savior, my sheep, they hear my voice, they follow me, and I give to them eternal life, and they shall never, never perish. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall indeed be saved. So I wonder God for you here today in the city of Glasgow, taken from the Gospel of Matthew. If you want to check it out, read for yourself, Matthew chapter 3. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Judgment is close at hand. Well, because God has given notice, don't you know, to the world that he intends to judge the world in righteousness. By that man only has rose from the dead, even Jesus, whom I preach to you today. He one day, if he's not your savior today, one day he'll be your judge. The axe is already laid to the tree and sin, it will fall, judgment will come to the world, to Scotland, to Glasgow, to you personally, while you have the time, while the gospel is being proclaimed to you. Now, even now, repent and believe the gospel. Oh, that God would grant you the grace so to do even today, Glasgow. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water, says John, for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He will gather his feet into the bark. The last and the greatest of the prophets, John the Baptist is named. Some people, they talk about another prophet, but there was no other. Jesus says so. The authority of his word, the last and the greatest of them, his name was John the Baptist. He says here, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. That's the old nature. That's the nature in which we were, we were conceived in and born, you see. Sin, you see, more, more than just presently what you say, do, and think. It's our very nature. It goes right back to our conception, God says, in his mother's womb. There he says, Psalm 51, check it out, we were conceived in sin, we were born in sin. We come into the world with simple natures, out of which comes nothing, nothing but bad fruit. God is looking fruit from you. Good fruit he wants from you. He wants you to glorify him. He wants you to enjoy him. He wants you to walk with him. He wants to fear. He wants you to fear him. But where there is no fruit, God comes to you looking for fruit, looking for good fruit in your life, and he finds nothing. He finds no good fruit now and in that day when he judges you as he will all mankind. Oh, my friends, how can he possibly find good fruit? From you, Glasgow, if you're still in those old natures in which you were conceived and born. You see, here's the hub of the matter. Here's the, here's, the, here's the crux of the matter. As Jesus himself says in another place, he says, unless a man be born again, he cannot see, perceive, he cannot understand, he cannot get it, he cannot grasp it, he can't, he can't understand what it's about, unless a man is born again, a woman is born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God, let alone enter into it. There's the problem, you see. You can become religious, very religious. Oh, that's easy. You can do that yourself. Join a mosque, a synagogue, a temple, even a church somewhere. And you can become also very religious 
But that doesn't change you. That doesn't change the very natures in which you were conceived and born, and in which comes nothing but bad fruit, and, and in which comes nothing but sin. The nature must be changed. The nature of the beast must be changed. The beast in you must be changed. You must, says Jesus, be born again. Because unless you are born again, unless those natures are changed, unless, unless you're born again, you cannot possibly, possibly bear fruit. So in that day when you stand before God in judgment, still in those old nature, never been a change, never been a time that you can point back to in your history, in your existence in this world, that you can point to and say, that's when I was born again. That's when God came to me and put his life into my soul and poured his love into my heart. That's the time when I was changed. My old nature was changed and I began to bear good fruit. So unless you can point to such a day, oh, you might be religious, you might be Catholic, you might be Protestant, you might be something else, anywhere in between, that doesn't get you a pass with God. A new creature, a new creation, that's what God's looking for. You have to be made new, because those old natures are fit for nothing but judgment. And then that day when God judges you, if you're still in that old nature, in which you came into the world, in which you were conceived, in which you were born, unless, unless you have been changed by the grace of God, by the mighty power of my Savior Jesus, unless He has caused you to be born again, neither can you do anything of which God requires of you. Repent, believe, or do anything else. God calls you today to repent and believe the gospel. You say, how can I? With you this is impossible, but with God nothing is impossible. It's by grace that we are saved through faith, but the grace of God must come to you first. How does the grace of God come to you? By the preaching of the gospel, by that which I'm doing here today, this afternoon in Glasgow, hearing the good news, the glad tidings, that God has a love for you, that Christ has died for a sinner like you. He's available for you. He even pleads with you and pours you through me that you be reconciled to God even this very day. The way is open because Christ Jesus has opened the way. Come. What? No, sorry. Oh, God. So like I say, I get a gospel of John, you want me to read it? Oh. Huh? You read it? You promise me? What's that? The gospel of John. The what? The gospel of John is from the Bible. Eh? You can have it if you want it. Hey, you're not going to waste it. No, no. You promise me? Before God. Honestly? Yeah? Okay. Have a good day, guys. Well, I go by faith, not by sight. <laughs> How you doing, man? Have a good day? Can I help you? A free Bible. A free Bible? Yeah, a Bible, I'm sure. In my bag, if you like. Aye. What do you want, ancient or modern? We've got the old, we've got the new. Which one do you want? These and those? Or new? Or new and these? Eh? The new one, the modern one. What's that? No, the right one. The right one. No, the right. Right to the right. And right to the bottom. Okay, the new, okay, the one. Sorry. Eh? Hi, I'm sorry. Sorry, thanks. Wish you don't get it wet. I wish you don't get it wet. Right. Yeah. Enjoy. I will do. Okay. Have a good day. God bless you. Bless you. Thanks, Phil. So like I say, friends, in that day still in your own nature, how could you bear good fruit before God? And in those old natures that comes up in that sin. I said, it's old, you know, it's, 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 I'm not just talking about you personally, not getting pointed, you know, 
that all the sin, all the sin, bear, they're all sinners. That's what God says, all have sinned, you and me both, yeah? You and me both, we're all sinners. And what is it that a sinner needs more than anything else? Needs a Savior. And Jesus is that Savior. The one appointed of God, anointed of God, sent by God. God loved the world and sent His only Son into the world that you are that you might be saved. Salvation is offered to you. Salvation is set before you because the Savior is set before you. You take Him, you receive Him, you confide in Him, you believe in Him, and you get salvation. It's that simple, it's not rocket science. You don't have to be smart, you don't have to be to university, you don't have to be clever, you don't have to be, you know, study theology. Quite simply, the gift of God is presented to you, is offered to you, set before you, you take, you receive the gift of God, and you get salvation. You take me, says Jesus, you get me and you get salvation. You get my righteousness. You get a new nature, reborn, born again of God's Spirit. Your nature changed, your heart changed, out of which comes forth good fruit, the fruit that God's looking for. To walk in the fear of God, walk in the joy of the Lord, to enjoy Him and to glorify Him, that's the fruit that God's looking for. But in that day when God judges you, the axe, he says, is laid to the tree. That judgment is coming. It's close at hand, says, says the last and greatest prophet. Therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. No good fruit. Nothing but bad fruit. Nothing but the fruit of sin. That's all that God finds in you in that day when he judges you then you're fit for nothing but to be thrown into the fire. And what's the fire but the fire of hell? So there's something to be saved from. And that's what the Savior came from. That's why he came into the world. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He came and he took our nature. Became one of us, became a man, a male child, virgin born. The incarnate God, God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. He came, he, he came, came down in Christ. He lived and loved and died. And rose again from the dead, what for? Take away your sin, take away your shame, take away your blame, take away the curse of God from off of you, take the wrath of God from off of you, liberate you, set you free Glasgow, change your nature, make you a new creature because that's all that God's looking for is a new creation. In that day when God judges all men as he will by Jesus Christ, the one that he has raised from the dead, pardon? Oh, that's because I'm facing that way, son. I uh, use the, the logic, the heat. <laughs> dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm a good one. So like I say, not many people applaud me. <laughs> can I take it while well, I can get it? <laughs> so I'll take that today, Glasgow. Thank you. But listen, listen up, Glasgow, please. The nature has to be changed unless the nature is changed, unless God by His Son Jesus Christ changes those natures in which you are conceived and born, you cannot bear good fruit. And God will be looking for fruit in that day. And the only fruit that He finds is bad fruit. It's the fruit of sin that's come out of you all your days. Nothing but the fire. The fire of God's judgment. The fires of hell. Something to be saved from. Sin, death, and hell. That's what Jesus came to bear. In his own body on that tree, on that cross. That's what Jesus was doing. 
Dying on that cross, taking our sin, taking our guilt, taking our shame, taking our blame, taking our hell in the love of God. God sent his only son into the world to perform, to accomplish this. What you can't accomplish, what even God's law couldn't accomplish, God accomplished in sending his son, his only son, into the world to die on that cross that you might be saved from such a catastrophic end as that. God loves you, Glasgow. God loves you. And the proof of it is that we have a Savior. The evidence is that we have a Savior, Christ Jesus the Lord, who came into the world and lived and loved and died and rose again from the dead that you might be made a new creature in him. Through faith in his name, believing, trusting, believe, 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 whoever believes in him and the Son of God shall not perish, but have everlasting, eternal life. Come to Jesus today, trust in him, take him to be your own, to be your savior. God, hear to him, cry out to him, ask, ask, he says, and it shall be given. Knock and you shall find it. Knock and the door shall be opened up to you. Seek and you shall find, he says. Ask him, ask him for the gift. Ask him for the gift of his grace. Ask him for mercy. Ask him, ask him for repentance. Ask him for faith. But man came to Jesus, son full of evil, help us, Lord. If you can do anything, help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, everything is possible to him who believes. Lord, help. I believe he cried, help my unbelief. Cry out to him. Ask him. Seek him. No. Well, well, you can, well, you may. As the gospel, as the good news, the glad tidings, as Jesus, the only, the only Savior, the Son of God, is set before you, offered to you, draw near to him, call upon his name. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus, that is, shall be saved. John goes on to say he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. I will be baptized in water, like John said. You can be baptized in a little bit of water, sprinkled. You can be baptized in a big lot of water. You can be baptized in the River Clyde or the Atlantic Ocean. That won't shift one single sin. That won't alter your nature. That won't put life into your soul. That won't resurrect you from the deadness in your trespasses and sins. You must be born again. You must be baptized in the Holy Spirit, says John. And only Jesus. Only he can perform this miracle of grace, the supernatural act of God. Putting the love, pouring the love of God into your heart so that you no longer hate God, so that you no longer hold God in contempt, so that you're no longer hostile towards God, so that you're no longer hating your neighbor, but loving God loving your neighbor. Only God can perform this miracle, this supernatural act of grace, pouring his love into a person's heart and putting the risen life of his son into your soul and making you live. Because until that happens, you never know what life is or existence. You might exist in this world. From the day that you're born, from the day that you leave your mother's womb, that's not life. That's not life. That's just empty existence. And you might exist on this earth for 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, 100 years even. 
and yet never, never, never have tasted life because you never know what life is until you meet life, until you meet the author of life, until you connect with Jesus by faith because he alone is life. He is the resurrection and the life. And he that believes in me, says Jesus, even though he were dead, yet shall he live. There's no life apart from God in Jesus Christ. Only an earthly existence. And to raise somebody from the dead, well, I ask you, what takes, what, 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 what does it take to do that? All the religion in the world won't do that for you. All the popes in the world won't do that for you. All the Mohammeds in the world won't do that for you. Only God can raise the dead. Jesus raised the dead. Conclusion, Jesus Christ is God. There is no other God but Jesus Christ. He's the one who raises the dead. He's the one who speaks life into a dead soul. He alone can raise you from the dead and put life into your dead soul and make you live for the first time in your earthly existence. But if you never come to him, you never connect with him by faith, you never, never get to live, you never get to know what life is. And then you breathe your last, you close your eyes at death, and you're faced with the dreadful judge of all the earth, and you're cast into the eternal fires of hell, and your death, your state and condition of death becomes everlasting, becomes eternal. But here today, here today, eternal life, life is offered to you. Life is set before you because Christ, the author of life, is set before you, is offered to you. Life in his name, life in Christ, and Christ alone, no other. No other. No religion can do this for you. No doing of your own can't do that for you. Can't raise yourself from the dead. You haven't got that power. Power to become religious. Power to bear bad fruit, but not the power to bear good fruit. Not the power to change your heart, your nature. Not the power to bring yourself out of the, the state of death in which you're in by nature and by sin. Only Christ, only Jesus, only my lovely Savior. He who bids you today to come to him, gentle, lowly, meek and mild Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God, the friend of sinners, comes to you today and implores you, implores you to his servants here today that you be reconciled to God. Think on it, Glasgow. Amazing, astonishing that God should so love this evil world and this evil city of yours, Glasgow, should so love you as to send his son into the world to live and love and die and rise again from the dead in order that in order that this risen life the life of Christ might be in you that you might have eternal that you might have the lasting life whoever believes shall not perish but have everlasting life but it's in Jesus it's in Christ it's in the resurrection and the life and he alone. I have the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man, no woman comes to the Father, gets life with God, except but by me, only through Jesus, baptized in the Spirit of God. Yeah? The vicar, the priest, huh? he can baptize you with water. He can sprinkle you, he can immerse you in water. The minister, the priest, whoever, they can baptize you in water, but they can't baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Only Jesus Christ can do that. Only Jesus can do that. Unless you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, there's no life in you. No new creation. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Huh? Oh, 
Baptized in the Holy Spirit, that's what's needed. Repent, believe the gospel. Glasgow and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Life in you, bearing good fruit. No condemnation, a new creation. Justified, cleared before the court of heaven. For time and for eternity. No condemnation. For those who are in, believing in Christ Jesus, no condemnation. Nobody who can lay a charge against you if you're in Jesus Christ. Clear everything that you ever did, everything you ever thought, everything that you ever spoke and that was contrary to God, forgiven, washed, the slates clean. No condemnation, never, never to perish. And then that day when you die, when you close your eyes in death, and you open on the other side, instead of being faced with a fearful, dreadful judge, welcomed by a loving Savior with open arms, ready to receive you into eternal glory. Condemnation taken away, cleared, just as if you had never sinned, justified heart by faith and by faith alone. Faith in Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever believes, whoever shall call in faith that is upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Faith the Lord. Christ the Lord. Faith the Lord. Says from sin, not your doing, which is all you're doing. All you're doing is not good. Everything that comes out of you because of those sinful natures is nothing but sin. Nothing but sin. There's not good, says God, and there's none who does any good. None whatsoever, none righteous, not a man, not a woman born into this world. Oh, I've said I come short of the glory of God. And so therefore, all are sinners, all need a Savior. And Jesus Christ is said before you presented to you here this afternoon as a Savior. Suitable. Suitable. Yeah, absolutely. Available for you. What's your name? To reconcile you. Sam. To God. God, Son, Jesus Christ, offered to you the grace of God, the one who can change you, can transform your very nature, make you new creatures in Jesus Christ. Medical of grace, that's what it takes. More than what religion can do. There you go. More than what the Pope can do for you. More than what any minister can do for you. More than what I can do for you. Change your life, give you a new heart, a new start, making you all together again. Give you the hope of eternal life. Now that the jingle bells are all silent and the lights are starting to go out, and back to the old self again, back to the old misery of sin and hopelessness, perhaps maybe for many in Glasgow today. Let me tell you, Glasgow, there's hope for you in the gospel. There's hope for you in Jesus. There's hope for you in the Son of God. He's the hope of all the nations. There's no hope without it. There's a sure hope, a certain hope, a hope that does not disappoint. Come to him. Trust in him. Believe in him today. Receive eternal life. Baptize you with the Holy Spirit with fire. He gathers his wheat into the barn. By this means you see that God gathers his people to the preaching of the gospel. Foolishness says God to those who are perishing, to those who are on the pathway to perdition. The preaching of the gospel, what I'm doing here today, all 
looking at his man, he's beside himself. I gladly be beside myself. For your sake, Glasgow, that you might be reconciled to God. That you might be brought to a knowledge, experiential knowledge of his love. That you might know the saving love of God. The love that he has for you now, but the saving love of God. Having been reconciled to God, to his son through faith in his son Jesus Christ, and to come to know that fatherly love of God. To know the way as well between you and heaven. To know that you are cleared. To know that God has nothing on you. To know that there is no condemnation. To know that you are forgiven and to have the guarantee. The guarantee, I tell you, of heaven. To know that you are heaven bound. The hope of eternal life through faith in Jesus, the Son of God. That's the hope of the gospel. I see all the hope that there is for the world today. It's broken, bad world. When God says that he so loved the world, he's not talking about the bigness of the world. He's talking about the evil. He's talking about the bad. God so loved this bad, bad, evil world that he gave his only son. That through his son, sinners like you, Glasgow, not perish in your sin, die in your sin. Hopeless, the utter hopelessness, I tell you, a perishing of dying in your sin, going out of this world, and no hope for all eternity. No way back to God. Man, now is the time. That's all you. So like I say, friend, the hope of the gospel, the only hope for Glasgow today, the only hope for you personally today in Jesus, the hope of eternal life set before you, offered to you, the gift of God, the love of God. Here it is the love of God made known to you. That God sent the Son into the world to be a sacrifice for sin. For the sins of the whole world, the Bible says. God's love for all mankind. The Bible has numerous, innumerable, innumerable proofs throughout the Bible of God's love for mankind. And the ultimate, the greatest proof of all, sending His Son into the world, in the likeness of our nature to pay the penalty to pay the penalty for sin that death that death that he died was due to you and will be yours one day if you do not repent and believe the gospel that death that he died is the death that's due to you that hell that he took upon himself is the hell that's due to you and will be yours one day if you do not repent and believe the gospel. If God does not come to you by his grace, through the preaching of the gospel, and awaken you to your danger, the reality convince you of the reality of your sin, of your unbelief, and of the judgment and the righteousness of God, unless he awakens you to the reality of these things, I tell you, you'll never see. You'll never see, you'll never get it, you'll never understand. You must be born again, you see, or you'll never understand the great need that you have of Jesus. But I tell you, the Holy Spirit awakened you, awakened you and allowed you, and I pray that today He would do so to myself and my colleagues that he would awaken you to the reality of these things because when he does I tell you you'll swim shark infested waters to get to Jesus Christ because nobody that he can save you 
He's the only savior. There's no other savior. There's no other mediator between God and man. Mary, the mother of Jesus, she can't bring it to God. Muhammad, Allah, fictitious gods, they can't bring it to God. One mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, Son of God sent into the world to be the savior of the world. Come into the world to save sinners. And that's what you be, Glasgow. And that be your need today. Whether you realize it, whether you know it or not, whether you've been awakened to the fact or not, that's your need, your de desperate, desperate need. I call upon you today. Repent and believe the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Go home. Shut your doors. Lock them. Nail them shut if you have to. Keep everybody out and get on your knees and cry out to God. And continue to cry out to Him until you know that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Until you know that you've been born again. Cry out to Him. Give Him no rest. Do what He tells you to do. Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked forsake His way and the unrighteous man is thought. And let Him return to the Lord for He will show mercy abundantly pardoned. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All the rest shall be added to you. Today, Glasgow, do it today. Go home, on your knees, cry out to it. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Who knows? But maybe he'll come to you with his salvation. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Glasgow, hear the voice of the Savior. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent, 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 repent and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God, His grace, His love, His mercy is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel, Glasgow today while you may. You'd like to have a copy of God's Word, your Bible, New Testament, Gospels of John. You'd like a copy of God's written Word to come and ask for one. You've got a question pertaining to these things, please come and ask your question. You'd like somebody pray for you, then I would be more than happy to do that for you also. May God bless you, Glasgow. Bless you, I say, and of mercy. Mercy upon your precious, precious, never, never dying soul.